May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each one of our hearts be always acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I will not leave you orphaned. At some point, we all want or we need to hear these words. They speak directly to some of our greatest fears and challenges. Abandonment and isolation, loneliness and vulnerability. They remind us that we are not destined to walk this earth alone. And to be sure, there are moments when the transitions, changes, and tragedies can leave us feeling like we are orphans. And then the questions begin. What will I do now? What happens next? Who will love, nurture, and guide me? What's going to happen to me? Those are the orphan's questions. Those are the questions I imagine are the ones that are running through the heads and the hearts of the disciples in this morning's gospel. The feeling of being an orphan, it's real. Anyone who has ever loved and lost a spouse, a child, a parent, a friend, security, hope. They know those questions that the orphan raises. You and I, we fear becoming orphaned. You know, and that fear, it points to the deeper reality that by ourselves, we are not enough. Now, that's not because we're deficient, but it's because we were never intended or created to be disconnected. We were created to love and to be loved to live in relationship as persons giving ourselves one to another. I will not leave you orphaned. That is Christ's promise. Regardless of the circumstances of our lives, storms, death, separation, we have never been and we never will be orphaned by a God who loves and cherishes us. But I have to think how strange that may have sounded to the disciples because in the very same conversation, Jesus tells them that he's leaving and then he's coming. He's leaving and he's coming. It kind of sounds confused. It sounds like opposites. Leaving and coming or perhaps presence and absence. And these must not be held as kind of dichotomous. They're not opposites. They need to be held in tension. They're not mutually exclusive. You see, that's what Jesus has set before us in this gospel. And that tension, I think it confronts us with the question of whether Jesus for us is some past memory of something in a book or is a present reality. Is it a sentimental story that makes us feel good? Or is it a living experience that challenges and guides and nurtures our life? And so according to Jesus, the answer to that question, it's determined whether or not we're going to keep the commandments to love. Revealed and fulfilled in how you and I love our neighbor as ourselves, how we love our enemies, how we love God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. You see, love is our access to Jesus' promise that we will not be left orphaned. Loving one another does not make Jesus present to us. No, love makes us present to the already ongoing reality of Jesus' presence in and through us and in the world. I will not leave you orphaned over and over, day after day, regardless of what's happening in our lives. That is God's promise to you and me. And we've not been abandoned. And so do not abandon yourselves or others to the orphanages of the world. Love with all that you are, with all that you have, even as the Holy Trinity of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loves us with all that they are 
and all that they have. In the midst of such love, we never need to fear being orphaned to being abandoned. Amen.